refresh errors. Nobody likes them. However, when they happen, we need to, first of all, know about them, and second, how to fix them. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how you can build a visual that gives you an overview of all of the errors that you wanna check for. So let's get started. Welcome to How to Power BI, my name is Bas, and if this is the very first time for you visiting this channel, then make sure to hit that subscribe button. In this channel, I share everything I know about Power BI. Now, let's have a look how we can build this overview visual here that gives you an overview of all of the most likely refresh errors that you want to check for. Now, why do we want to build a visual that gives us an overview of all of the refresh errors? Now, that's because otherwise you might end up with errors like this one, which are not necessarily that insightful. And then you have to go to Power Query to fix out where the error exactly happened. So therefore, we want to have a nice overview of all of the different error types that are likely to happen and how to fix it. Okay, so let's get started in Power Query first. Here, I already built a query that combines all of the data from all of the Excel files that I put inside of a folder. Now for this to work in each workbook, there needs to be a sheet called forecast, okay? Otherwise it doesn't find the forecast sheet and it will not work for that specific workbook. Another requirement is that we have the same number of columns because otherwise some of the data is missing. So I want to build in these two checks, one for the sheet name and one for the number of columns. Now let's have a look at one specific step inside of my query, which is over here, the removed other columns step. Now at this point in my query, I have an overview of the different Excel files. And right next to it, I have different nested tables. And each one of these tables contains the data of that specific file. Now for some workbooks, we got an error. And the reason is that it couldn't find the sheet name forecast, okay? Now for our query to still run till the end, we need to remove the rows with the errors first. Okay, so let's do that. I'm going to remove those rows errors. Now, of course, we still want to get informed about it. Okay, so this is where we're going to have our first checkpoint. Okay, now what we're going to do is we are going over here to that step that we inserted here, remove the errors, we right click, and we are going to split our query. So we're going to extract previous. Now, the new query name, that's going to be basically the staging query, or let's call it start. And what we are left with, this query, then takes it from that point and continues till the end. So this is going to be my final query. Now let's go first to the start query then. Now for the start query, we still have at the end all of the errors, okay? And what we can do now is create a reference to that end result. So right click and create a reference. Now let's name this reference query then error check. And here you see we have the error rows. Now let's go over here to the transform file column and over here we can keep those rows that have the errors. Okay, and now if I wanna know how many errors, we just have to do a count rows. So transform, count rows, two errors. Okay, now let's also rename the step then. So over here we have the error count. And the most likely reason for this to happen is because of the wrong sheet name in the workbooks. Okay, so error count, wrong sheet name. So now that we have the number of errors, we probably also want to know in which workbooks. Okay, so that's what we can do in the next step. So let's insert a new step. And here, instead of referring to the previous variable, we're going to refer to the variable called count errors. Okay, now at this point, you have the whole table and we only need to have the first column. So we're going to have a list that contains all of the files in which we have errors. Okay, now to do that, we can open the square brackets and just refer to the name column. And that creates a list. Now, instead of having a list with, now in this case, two values, we want to have just one value that combines the sheet names. Now for this, we can use a function that's called text.combine. Okay, now let's put this list inside of the brackets and see now it combines the two workbook names but we have want to have a comma in between so we can add an argument in between the quotation marks where we put in a comma space 
Now let's then also rename this tab. And these are the files with wrong sheet name. Now this is basically all of the information we need for our first error check. If all of the workbooks have a sheet with the forecast in there. Now the next thing that I wanna check for is if in all of these workbooks that we have inside of the folder, we have four columns, okay? Otherwise something is also wrong. Okay, so that is going to be error check number two. So let's go back to our query and insert a new step. And here we want to, first of all, have what we have at the beginning, so the source tab, okay? And then we can remove those rows where we have an errors in this column. And so over here, let's remove those rows. So now that we have removed the error rows that were caused by wrong sheet names, we can add a column that counts the number of columns that we have for each one of these nested tables over there, okay? Now you see when I click here on the first one, that's four. The second one only has three. So there we have an error, okay? So now let's create this column. So I go here to add column custom column and here we can use a function that's called table.columnCount and we want to count the number of columns for these nested tables there. So that is in the transform file column. So I'm going to insert that. Let's close the brackets and let's click OK. You see indeed here for the second file we only have three columns. So that would be an error. So here we can then put a filter in place that we only want to keep those where we have less than four columns because those are the files where there's a problem. Okay, so I'm going to click here on less than, four, and then we can do another row count. So here in the transform, count the rows, one error. Now let's also rename this tab then. So let's right click, rename, error count, wrong number of columns. Okay. Now we also want to figure out the name of the file where this error is. So this we can do by inserting a new step. And instead of referring to the previous step, we are going to refer to the filter row step where we have that file. And then also here, if you want to get a list of the names of all of these files, just open the square brackets and refer to that first column. Now this creates a list and then we want to combine all of the values that we have inside of that list, which we can do with the text.combine function. Now also here, if you want to, you can put in commas. And let's also rename this one as so files with a wrong number of columns. Okay, so now we need to create this table that gives us the whole overview with all of this information that's now stored in separate variables in our query. Okay, so let's create another step and I'm gonna make this formula bar a little bit bigger. Okay, and here we're going to create our table. Okay, now, first of all, there's going to be a list of lists. So let's open up with these curly brackets. Okay, now there are two type of errors that we're going to check for. First of all, we have our check for the wrong sheet name. Okay, so let's put that here, wrong sheet name. Okay, that's going to be the first list. And then we are going to have a list where we have the wrong number of columns. Okay, so these are the two type of errors. Now we also want to have the error count. Okay, so here we can just simply refer to the variable that we created, the step that we created where we counted the different types of errors. So here we have the error count for the wrong sheet names. And now for the second one, here we can add the error count for the wrong number of columns. Now, then we also want to know the file names. Okay, so here we can then say files with the wrong sheet name. And for the second one, we can add the files with the wrong number of columns. Now we have a list of lists that contain all of the information about the different errors that we have. Okay, so now we have to convert this to a table. Then as the next step, we need to expand this column and extract the values. And over here is the delimiter. Let's go for a custom delimiter. And you want to pick something that is not in the values, okay? So this can, for example, be, uh, let's go for a space, and then a pipe symbol, and another space, okay. Now let's split this column. So let's go to transform, split by delimiter. 
and over here you want to use that pipe symbol from before. I see now we're almost there. We just have to rename that first column to error type. The second one, that's the error count. So over here, error count. And then in the last one, the last one, there we have the error source files. Now, and this is then the data that we can use for our visual that will give us an overview of all of the different errors. Now, let's make sure that the start query doesn't load. So right click and disable the load so that only the final query load and also the data for the refresh error checks. Now let's load then our queries. So home, close and apply. Okay, so let's now go to our table error check. And from here, we grab all of the columns and put them on a table. So we want to have the error type, we want to have the error count, and we would like to see the error source files. So this gives me an overview of all of the errors that we have in our source workbooks. So now I need to know exactly where to go to fix what error. For example, the wrong number of columns is in the BM2020 forecast sheet. And the wrong sheet name is in the DA2020 forecast sheet as well as in the SEM 2020 forecast sheet. So let's, let's go there. Now we can open up that file. And you see, indeed, we have sheet one there. Let's rename it to forecast. So now I can run the refresh. Now, you see, we already fixed over here the wrong sheet name error. Now to really finish our solution, we can also set up alerts so that we can automatically notify it when there is an error. Okay, so to do that, we need something like a card visual on which we can put an alert later in Power BI service. So let's do this. I'm going to create a card and let's take the error count and put it on our visual. So now that we have that, let's publish it to Power BI service. Now we can pin it to a dashboard and let's call this dashboard refresh errors and pin it on there. Then you can click in the top right corner and then from here, we can manage the alerts. Add a new alert rule, give it a title, and then say when it is above zero, then send me an email. And save and close, and that's it. And this is how you can manage your refresh errors in an effective way. Now, maybe you have some extra insights that you want to share about it or your experiences, then use the comment section below. And if you got some value out of this video, then consider subscribing. And thank you very much for watching and I hope to see you in the next video.